Hey everybody and welcome back to Broden Plays Distant Worlds Universe. Now, what we are doing now is we are going to go ahead and take a look at what this empire does, what we should do very first of the game, and where we should go from here. So, I am a ruler of the Xenox. Uh, your style of government is technocracy, and your empire has one colonies in one system. But there are some victory conditions here, but it's sandbox mode, which is open place of no victory conditions. I'm a standard empire in the Age of Shadows. Pirates, smugglers, and mercenaries rule the galaxy. Your empire is largely undeveloped, with no space technology. Before you can take to the stars, you must first research critical technology like hyperdrives and colonization. Meanwhile, pirates and other retain and others retain these key technologies and thus dominate galactic affairs. As a fledgling stellar empire, you must develop the technologies you need while manipulating pirates and smugglers to work for you. And this is the things of what they say that you should do. Uh, when you start a sandbox game, they'll always say the same thing. But later on, if you go ahead and, and start um, an actual storyline game or anything like that, it will have different things to do. So let's go ahead and start playing. Now when you start, this will actually start the time. Uh, if you push spacebar as soon as you can, the game will pause, which is nice. Because as of right now, the time is going by and we don't have anything to build or anything of that nature. Um, I actually need to start a timer here. I wanted to go ahead and time each one of these videos so they don't go too long. Let me go ahead and restart that timer. Alright, there we go. Okay, and the reason being for that is I wanted to go ahead and do YouTube videos that were no more, no more than 15 minutes. Um, the reason being for that is I want to go ahead and make videos that could be watched on the go as well. It's one of the things that I want to do. Um, I do have the ability to make longer YouTube videos on my channel, but I wanted to, you know, allow you guys um, to be able to watch my videos without having to uh, take up a big portion of your day. So what we're doing right here is we're actually going to head, head and look at the planet here. There are a lot of screens to go ahead and take into account here. The first one is the colony screen. Now what the colony screen is, is it tells you the colonies that you have and the planets that you have colonized. So right now we have Xenox 1. Um, that is the planet that we're currently looking at here, Xenox 1 right here. Now what Xenox 1 has is, is a continental planet and uh, it's 87% 80 quality, the culture is 59, the population is 2,665 million. Uh, people are nine happy, <laughs> which is pretty happy. Um, the value is 157k, and then the tax is 26%, which gives us a revenue of 53k. Now we'll go ahead and talk about revenue and taxes a little bit later. But if you look here, the population is right here, and this is also the race and the name of the planet. So this is the race that has taken over it. Now we do have a couple of things here um, that tells you what's good about the colony. Like the inhabitants, they're satisfied with you, plus 10. Um, it gives, uh, this colony gives higher happiness, plus 20%. That's from the trait that we had earlier that was natural optimism. Carbon fiber at this colony provides a 5% development bonus, and Osalia at this colony provides a plus 5 strength bonus to new troops recruited here. Now these two things are actually um, resources, and resources we can see right here. So I will tell you about those resources a little bit later. Now our colony has a high vet level of development, plus 14, and that's from our leader actually. Um, and Bofurian Silk at this colony provides a plus 5 happiness bonus. Um, your empire's leader provides a negative 3% happiness bonus, and your current tax rate is too high, negative 9. Now you can go ahead and change the tax rates. Uh, however, I do leave the tax rates on automated. The reason being is because I, I find the computer to be able to do the tax rate pretty nicely, and I don't want to go ahead and mess with taxes aside from everything else that we need to mess with in this game. I'll go ahead and show you the different options and the things that you have for customization. Uh, that way you can go ahead and take a look at the options yourself and see what works best for you. Now cargo, this is what we have on the planet itself. So as you can see, we start with a number of resources. Um, and those resources are really high amounts as well. Um, so we can go ahead and organize it by amount. Like we have 30,000 hydrogen, 27,000 cassion. Cassion is actually, and hydrogen are fuels for ships. Now we look at the resources, 
These are the resources that the planet gives. And this is the percentage of, or the quality of the resources. So if you go ahead and look at steel, if we place a colony here, then 42% is going to be the efficiency of which that colony produces that steel. So in order to go ahead and place a colony or a mining ship, which we'll talk about a little bit later, or a mining, uh, mining station, my apologies is what it's called, you want this to equal about 100, maybe up to 120, um, uh, you know, up as far as it goes, but 100 to 120 is where you want to start thinking about whether or not you want to mine that. Um, your mining ships will actually go and mine planets, but your mining station will approve the efficiency of that mining. Um, so if you have a planet that only gives like 16% chromium, for example, then you won't need a mining station there because the mining ship will be able to mine that efficiently uh, without having a mining station. Now the troops and characters here, this is a little bit interesting because it has um, different characters um, that have, you know, different set of skills, um, different things that they can do on the planet, and I'll actually get into characters a little bit later. There is a character screen right here that we'll look at. Then you have the construction yard. This is what it's currently building. Right now it's not building anything. Um, but I will, right now, actually ask us ask it to build a large spaceport. So I'll purchase that, and it'll start building a large spaceport. I will tell you why I'm building a large spaceport a little bit later in the video. Um, and right here, you can go ahead and look at the docking bay, which it doesn't have any ships in the docking bay. And you can look at the facilities, which as you can see, it has none of those either. So as you can tell, only from the first screen, there is so much involved in this game that I don't understand why it doesn't have such a huge popular base to it. Maybe because it is so hard to get into, but if you see here, this is our planet right here. This is the star that our planet revolves around, and these are all the planets in the system. Now if you continue to zoom out, you will see that this is a star, this is a star, this is a star. All these stars that you see, you're able to travel to. And if you keep zooming out, you'll see that all of these stars have different systems within them. And we are located in a tiny, tiny section. So this game is huge, basically, is what I'm trying to get at here. Now let's zoom back into our planet, our home planet. Um, right now we don't have the ability to go into space, but that spaceport will give us that ability. Now moving on, we do have the expansion planner. What the expansion planner does is it's a little significant tool. Because what it does is it shows you the potential colonies from things that you've explored. It shows you the resource targets by, by your empire, by the galaxy, and our resource location. So our only resource location right now is the Xenox, our first colony. It's in one of our systems. It is our continental planet. Now if you take a look here, it actually gives steel. It gives it gives the things that I, I scrolled over earlier, but I wanted to show you that if you do scroll over this, it shows you all four and the percentages thereof. So this is really a nice screen just to take a look at all of your colonies and what you're all bringing in and what you might need a little bit more of. So let's go ahead and exit that right now. We do have the Empire com Comparison and Victory Conditions. Right now, our victory conditions are nothing. The reason being is because we turn those victory conditions off. Now you do have achievements here um, that you will be able to, to get um, as the game gets completed. You know, population, territory, econo economy, basically none of this makes any sense <coughs> unless of course you put the victories on. Now, my apologies, my throat is getting a little dry from talking. Um, okay, so if we open the Empire Policy screen, this is when we start getting into the options of the game. So, this is really the meat and bones of the entirety of the game. I'm going to take a sip of this beverage here. Beverage of the day is Coca-Cola. Alright, so... The thing that is nice about this is you can actually completely change your empire to automate fully, automate a little bit, or not automate at all what happens. So what I did with treaties is I actually went to suggest new treaties, so the game will automatically suggest things here on the right hand side as far as treaties go, diplomacy and war goes. As far as diplomacy and gifts go, I went to go ahead and control manually because I want to control when I go ahead and send gifts to people. 
Now, as far as mission assignments goes for intelligence, I'm going to go ahead and do that on control manually. Colonization. Now this is the way that your empire will colonize planets, when they will colonize planets, um, what planets they will colonize, it's basically everything else. I had it on suggest new colonies, but I'm going to put it to control manually. Now, colonies, the facility buildings. This is the things of, of what will be built inside the colony, all of the buildings that will be built inside of it. I'm going to control manually that as well. Colonies, the tax rates, I went ahead and put to fully automate. The reason why is because for small colonies below 200 million, you do want a zero tax rate because that will actually allow the empire to expand. And you will want to go from, I'm actually going to put this to low, because you want to go from zero to low to high taxes, medium taxes, or normal taxes is okay with me. The reason being is because you saw that unhappiness when they said that the taxes were too high. I want to go ahead and get rid of that. Um, so I want to put low and normal taxes on here, which will improve the development of the colonies. It'll also improve the happiness of the citizens. It, it'll decrease a little bit how much gold that we have, but we have a lot of cash flow. So we don't have to worry about that too much. Now, I had fully automate ship design, but I'm going to control the ship design manually because I want to teach you guys what different parts there are to a ship and why ship design is so important. Um, I'm also going ahead and control the research manually. The reason being is because I want to show you again what researches are important. Now construction, I will keep this on, no, I'll actually keep this on control manually as well. I'm going to control pretty much everything. Troop recruitment will fully automate because I don't want to deal with, the troop recruitment is what recruits on your planet and not the troops that go out in space. Now you can put them up into space if you put them on a spaceship, we'll get into that later. Again, it's a big game that has a lot of things going into it. But for now, we're going to fully automate what gets um, recruited onto the planet because I don't want to deal with that right now. And there's a lot of things to deal with. So war and attacks. We're not going to fully automate war. We're going to suggest attack targets. Um, I don't want to go ahead and make us go to war when the computer thinks that we should go to war. But I do want it to suggest some targets that we may be able to attack boarding and capture is the same here. Now fleet formation we will control manually. I enjoy doing the fleet so we're going to apply this policy. Now if you push escape and go to options you can actually see um, the different options here in the empire settings. These are basically the things that we did in the empire policy screen. It's just a little bit of a shorter menu so it's an easier way to get to that if you would like. Uh, resume playing. Now this is the game editor. I've never messed with that and so I'm not going to continue to go into that. Now the character screen. The character is a little bit interesting thing about this game. Um, the reason being is because you have a leader that is ruling um, and the, these are the traits that he has and each ruler has a different trait. If you see the pop-up come up here, depending on what he has over here, um, will actually make it so he's either better or worse at particular things. It's kind of like earning traits on Civ. Now if you go under here under the intelligence guy, his first mission is to prevent enemy intelligence. But if you see here, we don't know what his traits are because it says character untested, skill levels, and traits unknown. The only way that you can test a character is actually to send them out on a mission that has to deal with another empire. But since we don't know any other empires right now, we will have to keep him on counterintelligence until we know of another empire. Then we'll come back and we'll assign him to a mission. Now if we open the diplomacy screen, we will see all of the different empires that we have dealt with so far and their relationship towards us and our relationship towards them. Since we don't have any other policies or empires right now, it does just show us. Now if we go over here to the Empire Summary screen, this will show everything about the Empire. Mostly important are these two things, the government type. You can actually change your government type and have a revolution to switch the government. A revolution is not always a good idea, but if you do want to switch the government to have these a little bit different, that will be the way to do it. Also over here, there is the different types of cash that we have. Um, and I will actually get into this a little bit later. 
The reason being is because my timer just went on. So I'm going to go ahead and end this episode now. Um, and I will hope to see you guys again on the next episode where we will start talking about cash and getting into the rest of these menus. You guys have a wonderful night and thank you so much for joining me.